Winning is great, sure, but if you're really going to do something in life, the secret is learning how to lose. Nobody goes undefeated all the time. If you can pick up after a crushing defeat and go on to win again, you're going to be a champion someday. Meet Wilma Rudolph, Olympic gold medalist, world record holder, trailblazer, champion. Her story, though, does not begin in decorated glory. Rather, her childhood was a series of crushing defeats. Wilma Rudolph embodies what we as sports fans love, rising up against all odds to win it all. This is her story. Wilma Rudolph was prematurely born on June 23rd, 1940, weighing in at four and a half pounds. She joined 20 other siblings in a home that had no electricity or running water in Clarksville, Tennessee. As a child, she was sickly, having double pneumonia and scarlet fever. Then she got polio, which left her left leg and foot twisted and weak. Rudolph says, my doctor told me I'd never walk again. My mother told me I would. I believed my mother. Her family rallied around young Rudolph, taking turns massaging her leg four times a day. She rode the bus to Nashville with her mom every week to seek treatments at the closest hospital that would serve black patients. She wore an orthopedic shoe and a steel brace. After years of therapy, a dedicated, supportive family, and a fierce determination, Rudolph was able to shed her brace. She was 12 years old. Amazingly, Rudolph began to play basketball and run track and field. And even more amazingly, the girl was good. She was fast. Her basketball coach in high school called her Skeeter for Mosquito because she was so quick. Rudolph said, I ran and ran and ran every day, and I acquired this sense of determination, this sense of spirit that I would never, never give up, no matter what else happened. And things began to happen for Rudolph. When she was in 10th grade, the track coach at Tennessee State, Ed Temple, saw her run. He invited her to train that summer at a track camp. She would go on to win all nine events she ran that summer at the Amateur Athletic Union track meet. She continued to work with Temple in both high school and after she enrolled at Tennessee State. In 1956, when Rudolph was a junior in high school, she competed in the Melbourne Australia Olympic Summer Games. She ran the third leg of the 4x100 relay, and her team won the bronze medal. That bronze medal fueled Rudolph to train even harder. She wanted the gold. She returned home, graduated high school, and started college at Tennessee State. At the Pan American Games in Chicago in 1959, Rudolph won a silver medal in the 100 meter race. She won a gold medal in the 4x100 relay she also won the gold medal in the AAU 200 meters, which she would defend for the next four years. Rudolph won three AAU indoor titles as well. In 1960, Rudolph was given another shot at her Olympic dreams in Rome. She competed in three events, the 100 meters, the 200 meter, and the 4x100 relay. She won gold in each of these, making her the first American woman to win three Olympic gold medals at a single Olympic Games. In addition, she set a new world record, garnering her the title of the fastest woman in the world. These were also the first Olympic Games broadcast on TV in North America, making Rudolph an international sensation. When Rudolph returned home after the games, her hometown of Clarksville 
wanted to give her a parade in her honor, but the event would be segregated. She refused to come unless the festivities could be integrated. Clarksville relented and hosted what was to become the first integrated gathering in the town's history, all because of Rudolph. Rudolph's Olympic wins propelled her to worldwide super status, making her the most recognized and celebrated black woman in the country and the world. She continued to run and win, but retired from track and field before the next Olympics. Rudolph graduated from Tennessee State with a degree in elementary education in 1963. Later that year, she traveled on behalf of the U.S. State Department to West Africa as a goodwill ambassador. She made many appearances at sporting events, schools, and local TV and radio broadcasts representing the United States. Rudolph advocated for civil rights when she returned home and eventually began the Wilma Rudolph Foundation, which worked to train young athletes in Indianapolis. She spent the rest of her life helping and mentoring youth. Rudolph has been honored with many awards and recognitions over the years for her tremendous contributions to the sport of track and field into her community. She's been inducted into the Olympic Hall of Fame, as well as the U.S. Track and Field Hall of Fame. The Women's Sports Foundation called her one of the top five greatest female athletes in the U.S. in 1984. She's had a U.S. postage stamp created in her honor, as well as many buildings named after her. Wilma Rudolph's story is one of inspiring determination. This weak and sickly child overcame poverty, illness, and physical limitations to become one of the most celebrated athletes in Olympic history. She was the first American woman to win three gold medals. She set records. She advocated for equality. She helped kids. Wilma Rudolph said, the triumph cannot be had without the struggle. And I know what struggle is. I've spent a lifetime trying to share what it's meant to be a woman first in the world of sports so that other young women have a chance to reach their dreams. Never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. Thanks for watching Heartbeats on the Sports Beat. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next inspiring sports story.